What are you looking for? I put the car around here somewhere. Last time I saw it, it was on the floor. Oh, oh, it's on the table. <laughs> That's right. I did that last night. Boy, that was fun. Like I said in the last video, I'm going to get through all the hullabaloo and nonsense of cutting this thing out, and I'll present it next time on the table. And here we are. Second day. Here it is on the table. Take a look inside, madame. Tra the car is very tippy, so we're not going to touch it. So this is the old floor jack in the car technique to lift it up. Today we're going to do floor pans. I went in last night and cut out all of the seat and package tray area because the rear of the chassis is lifted up six inches so the engine's hitting where the back window is, etc. So I cleared it all out. Got a floor jack under the front. You can see it's <laughs> perfectly balanced. <laughs> I mean, OSHA approved. Nothing can go wrong here. Got a little lift action. I'm going to put a new floor pan one side today because the second side's redundant. Nobody wants to see that. They want to see the adventure of the first time. So I'm going to do it over there. It's pretty basic, just like that quarter panel replacement. Uh, it's a direct replacement. The big question is, does it fit? And then how does it interact with this crazy modification we did with the tunnel? We know that this is going to be pretty much stock at the bottom. And we know that the bolt holes along the rocker panels are in their stock location, but everything gets weird in the back seat. Yeah. Like you. I get weird. No, I, back seat, the bug is a little bit too small for me to get weird in. But. <laughs> Let's discuss the floor pans. I just drove down to the Los Angeles to pick up. Anybody in the Volkswagen world knows MPI, e -M -P -I. Uh, they got this massive facility down there. And I bought these online, but I mentioned they don't really want to ship them because they're sharp. Is that where you went, MP, today? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't see anybody. I went in anonymous. I wore, you know, that mask I have that makes me look like Jim Carrey. Uh -huh. I mean, so they didn't know who I was. I just bought them. They're uh, direct replacements, as they say proper year. It's got the seat tracks and the little jack port and the little thing sticking out the side. So that's cool. They're pretty light gauge and I've heard different reviews on them. So we're going to find out. Some people have said that the bolt holes don't line up on the rockers. Some people have said they've required trimming. I don't believe any of that until I see it. We're going to try it right now, live and direct. Um, I cleaned up the paint on the edges that are going to be welded in along the floor pan tunnel. And then inside here, where the pans connected to the tunnel were still in really good shape, even though the floors were rotted out. So there's still a little piece of the old pan sitting here. It's spot welded in. You'll see all these little black dots. So it's in great shape. There's no rust in there. So I'm leaving that. I ground it really clean. I took all the tar off of it. And I mean, this, whatever it is, 16th of an inch raise in the floor height isn't going to matter at all. Not, not the way I'm considering, considering we raised the tunnel six inches. <laughs> so I'm going to lap it right on top of here. I'm going to drill a couple holes through and screw it just to position it. And then I'll probably just weld. Um, it's called a plug weld. Typically with a plug weld, you'll drill a hole and then fill it. That sheet metal is so thin, I'll be able to turn that welder up and blast right through the sheet into the bottom, probably through both of those. I'm talking like, I'll weld on 16 or 17 volts on that welder. I'll turn it up to 20 on these welds. I'll just, boom, I'll evaporate that steel and let it fill back up. It's gonna be really fast and really strong. That was a mouthful, huh? <laughs> How's that for an opening statement? All right, go ahead. Now that we've got all that cleared up, Look at that body. It's in great shape. Now that's lifted up. Why, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So about the Volkswagen. It's pretty good shape, all in all. But one thing I noticed when putting it on, with the floor pan, the way that we notched this to, to increase the caster, I immediately saw that the raising of this 
really interfere. So we're gonna have to cut these off, these little mounting tabs, and remake them. Because now they're a little bit rearward and they're hitting the mounting points. So when we drop it, remind me. Hey, we gotta cut those off. Other than that, it fits. The way we install this is first, pick it up off of the floor. And don't cut yourself. So these are actually made in Brazil, so I bet they're a direct fit. I know there's a few different places that manufacture these, but I'm not 100% sure. Brazil, you want to shout out? Are there 2023 Volkswagen Bugs still being made? I know they were made for a long time in Brazil. So uh, let's find out. Let us know. Nice stamping. Looks like every Volkswagen I've seen. Let's see how they work. All right, so the way that these go in is, you can't see it from that side, but they rest right on that little flange. The floor pan just laps on there. So I'm gonna lap it right on there. Oh, it laps right on. I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna come around. Hold on. Yeah, come around and check this out, because this is an interesting point. I'm gonna turn this on right here. That way you can see, right? Can you see these two? Mm-hmm. So you'll see that uh, when we raise the tunnel, you have this detail here, right? But now we have a doubler, so there's nothing really for this to attach to, right? So I'm gonna have to trim this. If you look at this distance here. The plate I put in, I'm going to have to open this up a little bit to get this to move in. About one inch it appears. So this is hitting, prohibiting that. So I'm going to cut an inch off of this flange there. Grab my metal snips. Look at that. That was the most technical thing I've done in the last five minutes. Put it back in place. If you look at the front, you'll see how it just laps on there like it belongs. Ooh. Yeah, now we got some space back there. I'm gonna notch this out. Let me get my magic marker. All right, I'm gonna trim that now. So that, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna have to clean some of that crust off. A quick little trim out of this. Just a minor, minor little notch. And while this is out, uh, if you look underneath, there's a bunch of that tar that they put for rust. I guess it's a rust inhibitor. I don't know. Seems like so many cars from the 70s are just sprayed. Hey, folks in other countries, do they put all that crud? I guess it was a fad here in the States. You see it everywhere. Just that heavy. See the spray on stuff? Undercoat. Do cars like in Brazil or Europe get this? Look under here. See the way this is coming off? Mm -hmm. All right. Seems like every car. I guess it was like an option, right? Here, you get your car undercoated. I wonder if other countries have that. So look at that. All right. So we got two trims and a little. This jack has a leak in it. Look, it's already sagging. You know, one of these days, we're going to get our act together. Here, I'm going to raise this car back up. One of these days, we're going to be actual professionals. All right. Slap this back in place. That is dang diggity close. A little more trim on that, and we're in. There's crust in curious places. I'm gonna wire wheel that. One more test fit. See how it's good. I like it. I like that a lot. Cool. So it looks like it fits just fine. See this area here? 
This width seems to be appropriate. Uh, there's a little bit of a weld I have to grind off. I was worried that this wouldn't line up, you know, uh, distance-wise, but it's perfect. I have to grind cool. out this weld a bit to clearance it. Uh -huh. Let me do that. Oh, yes. Pairing to clearance. It up. Is everybody ready? Let's say that looks pretty swift. Pretty swift. So pretty swift. Spiffy? What was I saying? <laughs> it's a word now, I just invented it. That's Swiss. <laughs> I mean, that band we listened to said that Zeff was a term, right? <laughs> I just invented Swift. <laughs> Zeff style, we got Swift style. Can't be held accountable for the things I say. <laughs> oh. One more little cut. A wee bit more. I don't even know what gauge this sheet metal is. It seems thinner than 20 gauge, which is what I usually use. But I guess all the stamping rigidizes it. Pretty swift. <laughs> That's great. Pretty swift. Preparing to drop the body. Ooh. Wow, I really tighten that, didn't I? Sure did. All right, let's touch the floor pan. Let's see if them holes are gonna align. That was another concern. These, uh, this is an old Phillips screwdriver, and you know sometimes they get shredded on the tip, so I have alignment gauges. You could use the whole screwdriver, but now it's just an alignment gauge. Something to think about, don't throw it out. Oh, look at that. Holes line up. Almost too easy. I like it. That's probably going to fall back out, but I'll leave it there for the moment. I'm going to drop the front a little. Pairing the drop. Hey, remember what I told you? What? I needed to remind myself of something. Don't touch the See? pan. Everybody forgot already. I have to cut those two things off before I drop it. Oh. <laughs> no. Cut these two things off so we can get this show on the road. Can we just take a moment to talk about the eye muffs? Lots of folks are asking us about them, and we are happy to announce that they will be in our store in September sometime. The They're orange on ones. They're on their way from Australia. Australia. Um, we're not sure exactly the cost of them quite yet, um, but just so you guys know, everyone's inquiring about them. Um, and a few people have bought them already through uh, George's website, but shipping has been an issue with the expense of shipping. Yeah, so they will be for sale in the upcoming months. So sit tight because they are pretty rad. Yeah, they work great.
not only a spokesperson, I'm a representative. They work. So I'm doing a little double jack technique, highly esoteric. I don't recommend trying this at home. This is only for the most daring. Seems to be lining up. A little interference with the seat right here, but I could shift that body over a touch. I'll try this. Oh yeah, it's definitely it's an inch over. There it is. I was just hitting the seat track on the rocker panel. There it is, now it's clear. All right, coming down. Cool. So that body's resting on the pan. But it's sitting back a little rearward. Let me see that's in place. Yeah, there's a little flange on the frame head here where the seal goes, a little gasket. I'm gonna to try to just pull this body forward. There, oh look, it just fell right in. There it is. Cool. So it's still hitting on those body mounts. I don't know if you can, maybe you can look through this hole. Let me see. So, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, cool, perfect. So these little deals, you can see those tabs, those are two cylindrical shapes that were coming up. Cut those off, but it's still hitting right here. We have to modify this as well. A little sawzall will do that. Excuse me, reciprocating saw. A lot of people were really impressed in part nine of the video with your uh, grinding disc, how it was cut all the way down. <laughs> Get my money's worth. Check this out. People were sending us these Diablo blades and they do work great. But look at this. They have a tendency to shoot their teeth off. So I found that the other brands, Lennox, Lennox, and Milwaukee even, they, they do outlast this style blade. Just a little heads up. In my experience, cutting through sheet metal. And I try to run the saw reasonably slow too, but I noticed uh, I got a pack of, I think, five or six of these, and they've all done the same thing. The teeth launch right off. They don't get dull. They just get popped right off. Mm. So when you're using the tool, it bang, it catches. Little product review. They do cut like the Dickens. We saw it, though. They do cut. Those two out of the way, and that body dropped right down where it's supposed to. Yeah, it did. I caught it. Nice. So it's coming together. And you know what? This floor pan looks like it fits perfect. I don't know what experiences you folks who are talking negative about this have had, but that bolted right on. Around the perimeter of the floor pan, there's a, a number of like eight millimeter metric bolts. Of course, they're all metric, but M8 that go and fasten this to that. There's a gasket that goes in there, but we're not putting that in yet. Then up here in front, there's four larger bolts, maybe M10 or so. See, they line up as it should. So I'm gonna install those and put a little cinch on it. I'll pull that body down. To the chassis. One of the online suppliers actually has a kit that has the gasket, all the new bolts. It's on order, so waiting on that. I'm gonna use the old stuff just to position it. It's gotta drop down a little more. It's close. Oh, grab. There it is. Sweet. 
All right, we got one large bolt in the passenger side. Let's see if we can get that other one to go. Oh yeah, this side is actually making contact with the frame head, so that's good news. Nice. Sorry about that. First time with a wrench in my hand. I don't know what they're complaining about. It's a direct fit. That one lines up too. There you go, it's Honest Ian's floor pan review. It fits. So let's discuss the fastening of this. This is gonna be almost too easy to attach. I thought I was gonna screw it down, nope. I'm just gonna be able to push on that with a piece of metal. Look at that, perfect. And then you weld that? That is correct. Cool. So, so all floor pans like this, once you get it bolted in, everyone would have to weld it in, correct? Uh, with Volkswagens, they bolt in on the perimeter and they weld it on the center. But if this was like a standard, you know, US car or anything else with a proper chassis, different than this, the floor of the car body is independent of the chassis. Mm -hmm. So that would weld in fully. So the floors on this car are actually the quote unquote chassis. One of my favorite designs. I understand. Remember the Cadillac, the Caddy Whacked? Yes. I did that. I built it like a Volkswagen and put the Cadillac body on it. Oh yeah, because when Heidi was here doing mm -hmm. all that welding, I was wondering why all that welding. Shout out to Heidi, Heidi the chooky hand. Yeah. When that episode comes out, you'll see, well, you won't, you'll see her work. She helped me put the floors in that car. Like I said, I haven't, you know, it would be nice if I could get a ground on this. <laughs> How long did that take? Five minutes? It, did, it didn't even take you as long to get the uh, floor pan in. Yeah. So as I mentioned, this is typically set up in the 17 area, but because I'm going for the gusto. I'm bouncing it up to 19.8 or 20. I'm going to hit that wire a little faster too. These settings are unique to this machine. They vary from unit to unit. Now, Jamie, I'm not even going to ask you to look in on this welding. I'm going to show you the results. So don't even worry about a helmet. Ah, uh, okay. We got some, we got some sparks flying. I'm not yeah, I was thinking. Space. It's so funny because I'm getting to know welding and understanding the different settings that I am learning when there's going to be bigger sparks that could really actually burn me. So, so. This is the tool of the trade. I'll get into a little bit of what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and I'm going to push down then I'm going to weld it and you'll see the results. So, I'm going to take a break. A little dirty in here. I'm gonna grab that spotlight and discuss the weld. I mentioned earlier about drilling and spot welding or plug welding. So I left these a little burned back to show you what's gone on. See how the, see this vacant spot here? Mm -hmm. So this is the floor pan. So what I did was I put the heat in and just dropped that weld bead right down into this. And I didn't fill it up because I wanted to show this so you could see the weld goes through. I didn't drill a hole or anything. See how there's uh, hollows on each side? So there's actually a spot that drops through, attaches to that, and then it fills back up. This is the completed weld right here. You see, it was a nice bead. So they're on the floor. I'm not being real nice about the look of these. They're going to be buried in seam sealer, but now I'll turn the welder down a little bit and just fill up these few. But the rest of them will be welded in that 
range right there. Just drop the steel through, let it build up. Can you dig it? It's swift, baby. It's swift. <laughs> See, it's catching on already. <laughs> let me blow some of that crud out. Then we're going to get into how do we join the top level with the lower level? That's what everybody's wondering. See arrows around here anywhere? There it is. All right, take a look in there and look at that void. You can see there's some space to fill. So you see these two deals here, right? This is what used to bolt to the body, and this is what should bolt to the body. So what I'm thinking is, why don't I cut this little flange off and just drop the sheet metal straight down? We're not going to use these bolts at all, but this is very strong. So I'm thinking about just plating that straight down right around the turn. So this comes straight down to here, welded solid. What do you think about that? It's swift. Yep. And do a couple little welds and then discuss what's going on next. I'm going to attach the, uh, that larger brace to the tunnel. I'll show it once I'm done. So some pretty cramped quarters. I wish everybody could be in the car with me watching it, but space is at a premium. Turn that welder way down now to 15. 230. I've had some good response to people saying, man, just the insight on how you weld stuff. Because some folks may think, you know, one one setting does it all, but it really doesn't. I'm moving that thing around depending on what I'm welding, the position, the material thickness, the weather, moon phase, tide. I invite you to step into my lair. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way that this is attached up here, I recreated that here. Welds a little bit fat because I really wanted to bridge. There was a little gap in there, but I want it to be super strong. Something and connecting from here straight up to here with one piece, and then from here straight out with another piece. I'm gonna make two paper templates, transfer that to steel, and get busy. Take a look at those paper templates, and you can see the layout. Right? Mm -hmm. So we still got our hole where the battery wire went through. I'll clearance that out a bit, but basically one and two. Then you got this good support behind. I could access that from in there, spray it with whatever later. And then I'll trim off this little flange after the weld from underneath. As you can see this one's just gonna sit on top. And then I'll trim off this from the back side once it's welded. Or I could even just hammer it up, that'd be uber strong. Well, you know what they say about a clean workshop. That's tomorrow's project. <laughs> These were pieces for another car. Didn't work out, so I'm gonna use them here. Hopefully we got enough steel. Oh, look at that, we just made it. See, it's divine intervention. It is swift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got a marker. Are you happy it's Friday? I'm gonna be happy at the end of the month. Because we'll be done with the other projects and we're going full on. This little jewel is on deck. And this, full time. Ooh, yes. All winter long. Talk about it, talk about it. What else, what else we got going on with it? Uh, Throwing around some ideas. 
Yeah, we just got a lot of stuff going on with uh, maybe a, a class, be it an online class and or in-person class. We did yes. put that feeler out on the socials. So let us know what you think because we're going to do a, a chop class here in Southern California uh, in October. It is already full, but we were, I am toying around with the idea of doing a live uh, meta class for a fee, and it won't be that much. A small fee. A very small fee, just for the the setup. For for people that you know can't spend the money or spend the time to come out here, because right. a lot of folks are like, "No, I'll come out for three days, like whatever it takes." And it's like, yeah, we're not we're not price gouging, right? We just want right. to make it. If if we have an online presentation that yep. is scheduled to make X amount of money, then it allows people to come to the class for less price. Right. So we're considering like work trade, you know, more of just the communal thing instead of a price gouging event. Right. You know, and then share. and then our YouTube audience for those of you and let us know in the comments because uh, I'm the one that kind of comes up with these technological ideas. Um, when I was in nursing school, a lot of times there would be a live lecture that I would watch live from home when I my child was a baby, and it made me think of that kind of learning. So, but even during COVID, there was so much stuff. We oh, did so true. much on the. Whatever. So we're thinking about doing a live for a fee uh, metal class. Uh, well, actually, not a metal class, a chop class. So the class physically is full, but yeah. So let us know what you think. If you guys would be interested, guys, ladies, if y'all would be interested, because extraterrestrials, extraterrestrials, we know they're watching. Um, if y'all would be interested, because that is definitely something I would love to do during the class. Is you know, be the. The moderator, oh, there's a fun. The hostess with the most. Right. The moderator for your metal class for those of you that are online that, you know, maybe physically can't do it, but you want to watch all the reasons you live in another country. So, yeah. So let us when I'm 75, I'm going to be wanting to watch all the action on nice. the computer, not getting filthy with a bunch of 50 year old children. Yeah, some exciting stuff. So Ian's uh, season is about to wrap. We'll be seeing a lot more. Yeah, we'll be on this regularly, three or more times a week. And filming. I have so many ideas of merch, of videos that we're going to do. Ian with his cars, me with how I put it out in the world. So, yeah. Dad jokes nonstop. And me laughing. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Anyway, how's the arts and crafts going? Well, you can see I'm doing some very technical bending right here. All right, we got two pieces that look just like the paper pieces. Let's see how they fit up. Uh, it never translates directly. I say this every time. So we're going to take these tools and look at it again. So, yeah, it just looks like this. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. Looks like so this go. is just a little bit long. Let's take a little bit off of that. Yeah, look at that. Nice. That'll fit right up. I'll have to hammer that down just a touch. All right. Back to the welder. It's set up really fat, really hot, burning a lot of steel. This is the median arrangement. 17 on that machine is kind of a happy place. So here we are. Broadcasting live. You see any of those yellow things that go on here? I said yellow things. <laughs> That's why I didn't see them. All right, I'm gonna start by putting the first one in place, and then I'll fit up the second with the hammer. Now 
All right, you're welcome to take a look at that if you like. So you can see it's just tack welded around the perimeter. And then I'll fill in this hole next. All right, so that's tacked in. It's gonna be quite a bit more welding. So right now I'm just focusing on getting all the pieces to the puzzle in place. Then I'll tie it all together. I know in the other video I said that I was going to finish welding that tunnel, etc. But I just didn't because it's good like it is. I'm going to continue to weld it as I go. But that floor pan is in place. It fit perfectly. It's dead. So you can see front to back. Just continue spot welding around, and then you see how the tunnel raise works out pretty cool. There's just like a cove back there that's now six inches deeper. It's sweat. A little warm again today. It's getting into the fall. This winter's going to be awesome. A lot of cool stuff. So that's the deal on the floors. I'm going to duplicate that on the other side and mirror image and figure out what to do next.